Waimoku and our closest neighbor, the wild west coast, Miroai, lie about 30 kilometers northwest of Auckland City. Once a farming and fruit growing area, it's now become home to an increasing number of former city dwellers, drawn by the village vibe and the sheer beauty of the place. I was born in Canada, and I grew up on the roads of North America touring with my family band, the Nielsens. Now that I'm a mom myself, I can't decide whether my parents were brave or crazy, but I do know that over those years, I learned so much more about the world than I could have in a classroom. For my own kids though, I wanted them to have a village to grow up in. So here we are in Waimoku. Just a couple thousand people live here, but it's a colorful and accepting community that's made us feel very welcome. In this episode of Neighbourhood, we'll meet a Dutch woman who celebrates the achievements of the community here. I think what adds to a community feel is bringing everybody as much as possible together. So like with a playground, that basically everybody can come here, whether they've got kids or grandkids. A local jeweler draws inspiration from the beauty she sees around her. I think the longer I'm living at Murawai, the more I get inspired by what I come across. Finding this piece just on the beach, I mean, it's just beautiful. Look at it. It's so fluid, the colours, the shapes. It's just beautiful. A woman with Hungarian heritage shares stories of her extraordinary aunt. As they were approaching Vienna, her very special horse, Igezo, dropped down to the ground. And uh, so the, she had to make that heartbreaking decision of actually letting her pass away there. But the slight delay actually resulted in them being able to avoid the Russian army. And a woman from Malaysia carries on the family tradition. My flex weaving starts in my early days with my grandmother. I feel very much connected to her. Yeah, um, I'm very happy to be able to learn what she's taught me. I'm Tammy Nielsen, and this is my neighborhood. Lonely is where I'll remain. My dad was my biggest inspiration. Um, he passed away two years ago, and all the songs on my latest album are songs that either he wrote or that I wrote about him. He gave me, me this guitar for my 18th birthday, and uh, this was his strap um, embossed with the Nielsens. Um, he had been in show business from a very young age as well, and his life mission was to leave a legacy uh, that got us through all those highs and lows, and uh, even when the odds were stacked against us. And there's no doubt that his leg legacy lives on through me today. In my family, horses play a very, very significant role. That probably arises from the Hungarian side, where uh, the horses are a very important means of transport, but not just a means of transport. They are your guardians. We've got the concept of kaitiaki here in New Zealand, and the horses in Hungary, you could compare that to this concept. So this is Shady. And uh, yeah, Shady's our whānau horse, pretty much. Um, I mainly ride him, and he came off a dairy farm up north. And Shady's an old pig hunter, aren't you, boy? Shady reminds me of the first Hungarian mare I used to ride, um, Dorcas. And Dorcas was a flea bitten grey, which is his colour as well. And she had a very similar character. He, Shady can be really cheeky when you're actually riding him, but then at the same time, he is so looking after you, which is really nice. My name is Tatiana, and I was born in Germany. 
I do have very strong connections to my Hungarian side because um, I'm, I'm quite frequently in touch with my Hungarian cousins and I spent a lot of time with my um, Hungarian auntie as well in my childhood. My aunt's name was Countess Judith Gyorki and she had a bit of a rough time during the war as everyone else would have had as well. So a lot of her horses were taken away for the military. Um, but she did keep, uh, she did manage to keep about, I think about 70 of the horses during the war. This photo of her in the stable so reminds me of what she was like, always surrounded by plenty of animals. And I just so enjoyed this atmosphere that she had in the converted horse stables and you would never see her far away from the animals. My auntie, she wrote a book in the, back in the 1950s called Mark of Clover and it tells the legends of Hungary and the legends of our pretty much our family history but through the perspective of horses. I have spent many nights reading stories from Mark of Clover to my children because it is something that connects us. In 1945 I was forced to flee from the Russians the day we left, Igizo was taken desperately ill with colic. I could not stop my caravan of 64 horses and 27 servants, for the Russians were only three and a half miles behind us. I couldn't bear seeing my mare suffer so. She had to make that heartbreaking decision of actually letting her pass away there. But the slight delay actually resulted in them being able to avoid the Russian army. There was a young farmer's boy who was there when the mayor died and he came to her and he said, I actually know a secret way. I can take you away from all that army and get you into safety. So he led her and the horses and her entourage away from danger and uh, into a hiding place. There are only 2,000 copies of Mark of Clover and it was never republished, the book. And each of these 2,000 copies is numbered and is signed by my auntie as well. Animals are very important to me and in general in our family. If you care for them, they care for you, so you need to look after them well. And when we have an animal, we have the animal for life. And at my auntie's, the most significant horses were actually even buried in the same cemetery as she was. I think my aunt would really appreciate the way we're living our life. She would certainly really enjoy to see the animals and I think if she was still alive, she would certainly go for a ride at Muriwai Beach with me. These photos are of my family band, the Nielsens. Uh, we had a TV show and two top 40 singles in Canada and got to open for the likes of Johnny Cash. Um, and then I met a New Zealander and fell in love and moved across the world, which was pretty daunting. When I first arrived, I didn't know a soul except for my husband. So when I would get homesick, I craved a French Canadian dish called poutine and it's basically a heart attack on a plate. It's french fries and cheese curds smothered in gravy so it all melts together. 
And um, so I used to go to the fish and chip shop and get some fish and chips, and then I'd grate cheese on it, and then I'd drive through KFC and order just a tub of gravy. <laughs> and they'd say, just gravy? And I'd say, yes, just gravy. Give it to me now. So um, not exactly, you know, the pride of my nation, but it got me through when I needed it the most. I was born in the Netherlands. My best childhood memories were things like walking the dog. Hazer has a really nice natural area, like a reserve on, on its borders. Um, it's called Straberechse Heides. There's me on my bike. I must have been ready to start um, primary school, I think. So typical Dutch, of course, um, you know, you're going to bike to school. Um, so that would have been um, my bike uh, for, for primary school. The tradition in New Zealand is very different. Yeah, I've heard that so many times that if you tell a, a Dutch person, bring a plate, um, that, you know, they bring a plate, but it's got no food on it because, well, bring a plate doesn't actually say, literally, does it? It's got some food on it. Um, and the whole BYO um, concept is, yeah, I do believe that's a very New Zealand, uh, New Zealand thing. I'm making a Dutch apple cake today. Um, so I've made that a few times before and it's um, quite a favourite usually with people. My brother and I used to do competitions on who can make the longest, you know, where you try and peel the apple in one go. Most cafes in, in the Netherlands would have an apple cake on offer. So, well, yeah, in that way, it is definitely traditional. And also, the area where I'm from in the south is very well known for its, for its cakes and, and things like that, especially the province where my mum is from. This uh, little book is actually, it is definitely very awesome. Um, I can't remember exactly how long ago I got it, um, but it's quite a while ago. Yes, it's really lovely. It has some really, really authentic uh, Dutch recipes in it. And um, all the measurements have been kind of recalculated. So if you were to take a normal Dutch recipe and just use these uh, measurements, it, it won't necessarily work. This will be slightly different. Um, so, and they've all been recalculated for this book, so that's actually really nice. My mother taught me to bake and, and cooking a little bit as well, but baking more than cooking, actually, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, she would have definitely, um, we, we would have paid this together. The key to a good apple cake is probably the rum. Uh, I don't, I usually use um, kind of sweet apples. I do think that if you use um, sort of more tangy apples, that, that does change the flavour of the egg quite a lot. Waimak is a lovely um, community, um, so I really value that. We've been in this area for about 15 years now. Being part of the, of the Waimak Alliance Club has helped as well. So we've got to know um, a lot of people through that, um, some fantastic people. Um, and so that, that's, yeah, I guess that's maybe added to the, our feeling of, of being part of a community as well, I think. Well, I'm hoping to share it with um, some of our lines. It's really nice, lovely, active uh, group of people. And um, so we've recently put up a playground. Yeah, we'd, um, we'd like to show you that as well. It's really nice. Waimaku never really had a, a playground. Funny enough, we found a piece of land which we thought would be ideal for that. And once we started looking into it, it turned out that the council had actually set that aside for a playground, but but they'd forgotten. Um, so when we were saying, hey, that's a good, he was going, oh, yeah, that's actually meant to be a playground there. So yeah, the original plan was much smaller, but because the community got right behind us, we were able to put a much bigger playground up, which caters for, I think it's for kids up to 13 years old. So there's, uh, yeah, lots of things to do for them. Oh, oh, that looks marvellous. What's that? It's apple cake. Apple cake. Oh, great. Everybody will love that. They'll never turn that down. I think what adds to a community feel is bringing everybody as much as possible together. So like with a playground, that basically everybody can come here, whether they've got kids or grandkids. 
One Market Lines do other things as well, like we have to do a village gala. We actually had a gala with the opening of the playground. Um, you know, we do lots of other things to, to make sure that the, the community is, is really together as, as one. My grandmother was born to a First Nations mother and a white father. Uh, she grew up on the Ojibwe reservation with her parents and her sisters until her mother died in childbirth. The details of what happened after they left the reservation are pretty sketchy and I don't know that much about that part of my heritage, but being in New Zealand has really inspired me to explore that part of my heritage because New Zealand Māori culture is such a part of everyday life here. Um, and of course, as a songwriter, I'm always intrigued by the stories that have yet to be told. Every morning, I will usually go biking or walking with my dog, Coco, and I see a new world every day. I'll come across shapes, images, leaves, twigs, kelp, and they all inspire me for my designs. The other aspect is my cultural background. It's my blend of being Chinese, but also living in New Zealand. I like to bring those connections together to create pieces, to celebrate who I am. I think the longer I'm living at Murawai, the more I get inspired by what I come across. Finding this piece just on the beach, I mean, it's just beautiful. Look at it. It's so fluid, the colours, the shapes. It's just beautiful, honestly. I have this mentor in life, argue your limitations and they're yours. So what that means for me is if you say you can't do something, of course you're not going to be able to. So I always try and remember that just give things a go. And that's the same as what I feel about creativity. Let yourself play, let yourself make mistakes, because no one starts off as being the best creative artist at the beginning. Jewelry is a really special form of art because it creates a connection with people. And for me, with my Chinese background, jewelry is about a celebration of life. So when I gift a piece of jewelry or others buy a piece of joss to gift, it's saying, I acknowledge that your life is going really well and I want to celebrate that with you. So for me, it's more than a piece of adornment there's another element of saying it's really special and important to take a moment in your life to say, you know, life is good. Let's celebrate that, and I want to share that with you. I've inspected my leaves and found one that's clean and I really like the look of, and we just need to cut it to shape. Let's just see if it fits nicely into our mould. So that will go in there. And that's quite beautiful. I think my, my upbringing and my heritage has inspired me to explore work, particularly in the creative field. I think what it's done is it give, it's given me an eye for particular shapes or characters or patterns that I want to instill as part of my work. I like to use resin and I like to combine that with natural materials such as these skeleton leaves which are found on the forest floor. So for my nature inspired designs I collect my pieces from wherever I am and when I'm at Mirawai it's if I'm walking on the beach, if I'm in the forest, I'm always looking around. I'm foraging to find interesting inspiration for my designs, be it from a look and feel or from actually gathering the pieces. So this one the resin has set and 
This skeleton leaf pendant, I've actually put the solid sterling silver twig in place. So that's a completed. So I'm exhibiting as part of the Murawai Arts Show and the theme this year is Off the Grid. And I kind of think that Murawai is off the grid anyway. So one of my new collections is Kelp Me and it's inspired by the kelp that I find on the beach. I just love all the organic shapes. Um, and I really, I always really wanted to work with leather. So what I've done is I've made these leather neck pieces and the handmade catches here and um, gorgeous organic piece of um, kelp there. There is an amazing community of artists at Murawai. When the first Murawai Arts Trail launched, I was absolutely amazed at the variety and the range of work. And I hadn't realised because there were probably people like me in their workshops, beaving away, dreaming about new designs and then going into their workshops and creating pieces. Exhibiting with all the other Murawai creatives and artists is so exciting. It's just a real demonstration of just the talent and just the breadth of creativity that we have in our community. And I've been involved for, I think, this might be my fourth Murawai Arts Trail, I think. And every year, there's either new artists or the existing artists come up with something new and exciting. It really is very inspiring. It's fantastic and I feel really privileged to be part of this community. When we decided to move, we wanted to find a place that had a real village feel for the boys. And we've only been part of the community for a very short time, but already feels so welcome. The boys go to a real country kindy. They have chickens and pigs. <laughs> and they come home with, you know, filthy black fingernails and rarely in the same clothes they went in because they're wet or muddy, which is just perfect. That's exactly what we want. So I'm really grateful that they're going to grow up connected with nature and with the knowledge of what's worth protecting. As a kid in Malaysia, we spent a lot of time with my grandma. We have played in the paddy fields and in her herb gardens, which is she's really into collecting lots of herbs and making medicinal potions for the ladies there. And my grandmother is also a great weaver. My name is Isha Hudson and I'm from Malaysia. I was born in Malacca, which is the west coast of Malaysia. I'm cutting a harakiki and this is just a common one that um, you can use for making baskets and mats. Because I'm not a Maori, I do my own little prayer and I just say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim which is Arabic and that means you know just to bless the plants. I grow mostly natives and because they are so easily accessible and they just love the condition here. We have got uh, bukas, pseudopanic cabbage trees the karos, the caprosmas, of course the harakikis, and the naya over there at the background, and of course the famous pahuta cows, which we have lots of. I have been in Mirawai for 34 years, and I've brought up my three children here. Mirawai has got an environmental group which is organised by a few locals and they work on planting all the natives around the places allocated for them. 
I do a lot of gardening work for them, advising them about plants that shouldn't be there or should be cut back for future use. It's very important that we keep planting natives because we never know something in future might happen and the pests might take over the plants and kill them. So the more we plant, the more we're going to have access to. And for the younger generation, that will benefit it. Yeah, we're just going to clear the hole a bit. Okay. Let's put it straight. Nice and firm, and push all the dirt back in and give it a good. Well, we live in a, such a beautiful community here, and everybody knows everyone. And I think when something like this happens, they all come up and, you know, join us. And sometimes we have a little barbecue at the end, you know, so it's a good excuse to get together. Today we're having a few local children to do some weaving with me. And they are going to make a little kitty for their mother to put a pot plant in it so they can take it home. My flex weaving starts in my early days with my grandmother. I feel very much connected to her. I don't know if she knows that I'm doing weaving, but I'm sure she does, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to learn what she's taught me somehow. Fold them half. This one you probably could get two strips, uh, four strips. The uh, idea is for these children to know that this special plant has got so much quality and value for everyday using. You know, you can make all sorts of things, basket, mats and hats. And they will have a bit more respect to the plant and not try and crash into them or, you know, pull the leaves with, without having, you know, a lot of uh, thought about why you should respect the plant. I love to see the environment, the beauty stays, and I love to see that it would just invite people and people will come here and feel that this is such a beautiful place. On a hot summer's day, Miraway Beach is teeming with people. Surfers, locals, day tripping families from Auckland, and visitors from all over the world. Despite the wild surf and the rugged landscape, it's a place, no matter who you are, you'll feel relaxed and rejuvenated and energized all at once. Um, I grew up traveling for most of my life, uh, touring from the East Coast to the West Coast of North America more times than I can count. But it's really special to have finally settled into a place that I can call home. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.